Welcome back to another update on the Red Sea Reefer 250. Today I'm going to tell you about how I had a really close call with a high salinity accident. Hello and welcome back everyone to Amra Azul TV. All right, I'm gonna tell you about a very close call that I had with my tank over the past month. So where do we start? Okay, let's start about a month ago. I had published uh, a video on uh, my top five reef upgrades. And one, uh, one of my favorite upgrades was automation. I was uh, talking about my Apex and I showed a quick little screenshot of my dashboard. And I do have a salinity probe and uh, actually Karen's uh, reefer uh, on YouTube noticed that my salinity was reading 39's uh, PPT, that's parts per thousand. And he mentioned in a comment that, <laughs> is it really that high? And my response was, uh, I don't think it's that high. Uh, sometimes my salinity probe does kind of drift from its uh, uh, true value. And I, I haven't like, uh, I haven't calibrated my salinity probe in a while and so I, I wasn't surprised that I was reading really kind of uh, really high like 39's uh, PPT uh, but I just thought it was an instrumentation error because you know I'm looking at the tank uh, nothing nothing looks bad nothing looks weird I just assumed it was an instrumentation error so fast forward to last weekend uh, I got up and I uh, looked at my tank in the morning and I noticed two uh, awful things uh, from the start. Uh, one was my uh, Jason Fox TNT and Acropora colony was uh, melting away. And I actually lost uh, one of my favorite grasses, uh, rest in peace, my eight lion flash of grass from the Red Sea. Uh, I quickly looked at again at my apex and I saw that my salinity now was up to uh, uh, 40 PPTs. So I'm like, okay, this can't possibly be right. I got my refractometer and I measured the salinity of the water and sure enough, it was 40 PPT. So the, the salinity probe in the apex was not being really wacky. It was just me kind of being silly for not uh, double checking on these high values. So what I did was I immediately did like a two gallon water change, but not a typical water change where you take dirty salt water and replace it with fresh salt water. I just took out dirty salt water and added uh, two gallons of fresh water, RODI water. That improved the salinity from 40 to 38. And then over the past week, I've been essentially asking my doser that does the automatic water changes to take away an extra four or uh, three liters of water, uh, salt water from the tank and my automatic top off will then compensate by adding uh, three liters of fresh water into the system. So I did manage to, uh, over the past week, bring the salinity down from 40 to 38, and then very gradually from 38 to uh, 36, which is uh, typically what, where, where I like to keep it, like 36 and 35 is fine. So to summarize, it took me about a week to bring the water level from a salinity of uh, 40 parts uh, uh, per thousand to uh, 36. Uh, I've, didn't, I've been doing a little bit of research to uh, understand what's the effect of having this high salinity on my tank. Uh, now uh, it's important to note that this uh, was gradual. Here, here's a picture of uh, what's uh, one of the pieces of uh, my TNT and, uh, TNT and Acropora that you could see clearly uh, is uh, experiencing uh, slow tissue necrosis. Yeah, so I'm not entirely sure what's the effect of high salinity on the corals. Uh, it did happen gradually, so that, that's, uh, that's, I guess, something to be thankful for. Uh, and uh, again, uh, other than an uh, the Anacropora, uh, all the other uh, Acropora seems to be doing well. Uh, the Red Sea Ras, again, I'm not really sure whether it was salinity that did, uh, did him in. When, when, I would, when I looked at his body, it did seem like he was attacked. Uh, it, it looked like uh, he got beat up or, you know, I, I wonder whether like in the nighttime he got spooked and just bumped into uh, the power heads or something. Uh, but anyway, l lesson learned, uh, I'll, I'll do a much better job of kind of keeping on top of calibrating my salinity probe and, and double checking it uh, uh, every, uh, every now and then. All right, time for the top-down tour. Here is my clam and uh, WWC, uh, what is that called again? Little Red Ferrari. Uh, yeah, this is uh, uh, the new uh, the new tour with the porthole, the modified porthole from last uh, week. So uh, let me know whether you kind of like this look uh, versus the more typical uh, top-down views. But here we have the Hawkins, 
uh, the tiny little frag of orange passion I got I got a really special frag which I'll show you at the end but uh, uh, this one is a tiny little uh, less than one inch but it, it's got really nice colors and good polyp extension uh, and it, it's uh, slowly growing. Uh, I moved the Cali Tort from the center boulder here to make room for my new special frag. Uh, this is uh, Blueberry Wine, uh, the Green Slimer here and on the bottom we have the Bubblegum Digi. Uh, I, if you notice that uh, it had a really long branch that I, that I actually fragged. Uh, I am gonna try to keep on top of the Digi because it does grow uh, quickly. And then to the left here, we have the Refraft USA Applejack. Uh, so far, uh, I, I will say that the corals uh, are looking, I, I'm not sure if you can notice from the video, but just in person, they're looking a little bit more colorful ever since I changed into the Gen 5 Radions. Uh, anywhere here is a Jolt, uh, definitely noticing some more encrusting on, in the Jolt. Uh, probably the hottest thing in the tank right now is this uh, uh, PC rainbow. Uh, I mean, look at that. It kind of it does look a little bit like a rainbow. So I'm really happy with how this frag is uh, coloring up. I, I think right now it's, uh, it's probably the most colorful frag I have in the tank. Uh, here is the golden jaw dropper. Uh, at least I think it's a golden jaw dropper. Uh, the, the base here is a little bit yellowish. Uh, so I think maybe that's where the gold name comes from. Uh, and then on the right here, we have uh, Marvin the Martian, uh, very fuzzy, uh, really pretty. Uh, it doesn't grow very fast, but, but it is a, a really lovely coral. Uh, and then uh, in the black hole of Acropora death, I moved my uh, strawberry shortcake. Uh, this thing was, uh, it was getting maybe too much par, and then uh, Ape suggested I put it like lower, and it wasn't doing too good, so uh, you know, it, it looked kind of almost dead, and I thought I would just put it in the black hole of Acropora death and <laughs> uh, put it out of its misery. But it is coloring, so <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Okay, uh, check this out, guys. This is the new thing that I got. Yes, uh, I did it again. I, I really wanted a Walt Disney frag, and then the last one died in the black hole of Acropora death. So I went to uh, Candy Corals. If, if you're not familiar with Candy Corals, the shop in Toronto, uh, check them out, candycoral.ca. The link is in the description below. Uh, let me take you to the candy shop. Doo, 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 doo. Anyway, Afnan from Candy Corals, uh, uh, he uh, amazing person. I got this really healthy frag from him. Uh, so uh, do check him out. Uh, this is the what's left of the TNT and Acropora. Uh, the major laser is uh, looking uh, lovely as usual, uh, no, no changes. Uh, so this spot was where my TNT colony was and I moved my uh, California Tort mini colony, uh, sorry, uh, uh, pink Cadillac colony there. I'm hoping that it will color up a little bit. It, it was right in the edge of the tank getting very low par and which is why it looks like crap now. So I'm hoping it will color up in this uh, better spot. Jason Fox, uh, Fox Flame looking good. Uh, this this colony I moved it down from uh, uh, the left shelf. This is a refraft pot of gold Millie. Uh, not not too crazy about it. Uh, the pink lemonade is looking good and it's encrusting. Uh, it's not growing really fast, but but it is growing and the colors are still uh, uh, you know from the tiny little frag the colors are are pretty special. Uh, bonsai Valida uh, just kind of doing its thing. Uh, purple with neon green polyps. Uh, and then on uh, uh, this was where the pink Cadillac was and I put the Pac-Man from the sand bed because like the Pac-Man I've never had to give it a lot of light so I'm hoping that it will uh, thrive here whereas the pink Cadillac did not. And then the, the last two kind of uh, uh, pieces we have uh, uh, my uh, Miyagi Tort which I did kind of, uh, you, you see that uh, I cut it uh, pretty aggressively. Uh, you know, it, it does grow really quickly and, and I have to manage its size because everything else is frags and I, I didn't want it to kind of overwhelm, overwhelm the, uh, the tank. And that's the end of the top down tour. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I've definitely learned my lesson about uh, double checking uh, my salinity on a more regular basis. Uh, here's one last look at uh, Walt Disney uh, frag from uh, Candy Corals before uh, we call it a day. Again, thank you so much and uh, see you next video.